from the mcplive.tv studios located in downtown Conroe. It's the Conroe Art League, live. Hello and welcome to Cal Live, the show that introduces you to the many talented artists of the Conroe Art League and to the beautiful art that they create. My name is Ken Roy, I'm the president of the Art League and your host today. And our guest today is one of my favorite members of the Conroe Art League, Norma Godfrey. Uh, she's also one of the first members that I met and worked with uh, right. when I was a show chair because Norma at the time was uh, in charge of, it's a bad term, but it's the hanging <laughs> team that we're displaying, hanging the art, displaying the art on the wall. And uh, I learned I hope I can share this story with you, Norma, but I learned that at receptions, I would introduce uh, someone to Norma, and my standard introduction, you may remember, is don't boss her and don't cross her, <laughs> Norma Godfrey. Um, so, Norma, uh, welcome, and uh, let me tell the audience a little bit about your background, and you've been with the Art League for so long, a lot of people know your background, but... Uh, uh, for me, I didn't know where you were from, and so I've learned that you're originally from Abilene, yes. born and raised in Abilene, but at some point your family made their way uh, to Brownwood, and I'm uh, going to come back to Brownwood uh, for a comment later, but uh, from, I guess you graduated from high school in Brownwood, and then no, you, Abilene. you went back to Abilene, yeah. so it was Abilene, we, Brownwood, and We back started to out in Brownwood. Uh -huh. I was born in Abilene. Oh, and then, okay. And went to Brownwood. And went to Denver. Brownwood, okay. and uh, I was also mascot of Hiram Payne University. That's what I was going to come back and ask you. What <laughs> so does we'll go that? Back. What does uh, no? We're there now. So let's say, what does the mascot at Howard Payne University? What does that look like? Well, there were cheerleaders. Yeah. And so, me and George Cape were. I guess part of their mascots, they're uh -huh. the, the yellow jackets. Okay. <laughs> and when the game would start, they would grab our hands uh -huh. and we'd run out onto the field. Yes. Well, my legs weren't very long. <laughs> so they really kind of pulled me along. <laughs> but that memory is still there. Sure. I remember it. It was, it was fun. I, it was, I had this little blue and uh, gold outfit on and had it for a long time and had the little cap. And then through the many, many floods of uh, the San Jacinto River, all that uh -huh. has gone away. Uh -huh. So, great so, memory. So you were you were a Howard Payne Yellow Jacket? A Howard Payne Yellow, yellow Jacket. Yellow Jacket. Um, someday you're gonna have to bring a picture by. I think I'd like to see if you Well, had if one. I had it, I would show it you, to but you. you but it, it went <laughs> away in the flood. In the flood, okay. So, so you graduate from high school in Abilene, yes. and then you go to Baylor University, and you majored there in uh, business? Yes. And um, uh, so you get a degree? No, I, uh, a story about that, I wanted to major in art. Did you? But it. So what stopped? You? It had too much math, and I wasn't that great in math. So I said, uh-uh, I guess I'll go to business. So I did that, and became a secretary for the Scout in Phillips Petroleum in uh -huh. Abilene. Uh -huh. And uh, so that's my, I guess, kind of claim to fame. Okay. They may have wished I wasn't there, but, <laughs> but I, I enjoyed it. I made some wonderful friends. Yes. And perhaps you found uh, a husband there? Mm -hmm. He worked at uh, Alco uh -huh. across the street, and he saw me one day at a restaurant, and he asked my best friend, who was I, because she worked uh -huh. there. And she told him, and she had her eye out for him also. Uh-oh. And so he uh, called me and asked me out for a date, and so we went to a coat date, that's what she called it then. And then uh, we married not too soon after that. And every time I went out with him, my mother would say, how old is he? He would be a year older. 
<laughs> Finally, she said, just how old is that man? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So you, so you married, mm -hmm. uh, and then you became um, a housewife mm -hmm. and, and a mother. You began to have kids. And how many children do you have? I know you have some grandkids. I have, you... I have four children. Mm -hmm. Two of them are deceased. Oh. Uh, we lost Sorry. a little boy when he was five and a half months old. Tough. It is, Tough. yes. But... Uh, uh, and then my older daughter is deceased. Uh, and and then, then I have uh, four grandchildren. And uh, and I see pictures of uh, at, at least one of the grandchildren mm -hmm. quite frequently, yes, the equestrian. That's my great-grandchild. That's your great-grandchild. Okay. <laughs> I have four okay. great-grandchildren. So in the 70s, uh, now you moved to Conroe, uh, perhaps uh, your husband's job, uh, yes. and he's deceased as well now. Yes. And what was his name? John. John. Okay, so uh, John is maybe transferred. He takes you to your job, gets you to Conroe, and at some point in Conroe, you discover the Conroe Orderly, yes. maybe in about 1972. I think somewhere yeah. around in there. Now, at that point in time, Norma, were you doing art? Had you picked up something that you're beginning to do, or did your first art, art experiment, endeavorment experience come with the Conroe Orderly? Oh. Uh, when I was in uh, school, mm -hmm. elementary, uh, I loved art. Yeah, and so I did art, and I had a teacher that uh, encouraged me to continue with my art, and she was a lovely, lovely la lady. Mm -hmm. Her name was Mrs. Landers, and when I'd go back to high school, I mean to reunions and so forth. Well, uh, I took some of my art mm -hmm. cards and so forth, and she was at one of them. And she said, I am so glad you continued with your art. So she kind of followed me from there on. She is deceased, of course, but. When you say an art card, is that what you said? Norma? Yeah, my card, card, watercolor cards. Your you know? watercolor yes. cards. So tell us about that. Uh, they're like three by fives, five by six. Well, they're, they're uh, I would say they're five by six, five by five seven. Five by six, five by seven. And uh, there was a lady in Angel Fire, New Mexico, that made me G clays of some of the cards. Uh -huh. And so I took some of those. Uh -huh. And uh, and from there, now I'm painting cards. Why that? What attracted you to that? I guess smaller format. If that's the right way, mm -hmm. what, did you just feel comfortable working at that size, or was somebody else that you knew doing that? Uh, there were uh, other people that were doing that, mm -hmm. and uh, I would uh, send them to people, mm -hmm. and that's how that evolved. Yes. And they said, Norma, we would love to have some cards, and so then I would do that, and that got me on that format. And I'm continuing it now. Continue it even now. Yeah. Um, so you had a teacher that influenced you, and I suspect maybe you've had some classes and workshops mm -hmm. through the years, maybe yes. even a few at Cal, uh, that you began to develop your skill. And your first uh, medium of choice is watercolor. watercolor. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what you did at the cards. And you still do watercolor. We'll see some in a little bit. Um, but were there any specific uh, workshops or teachers that you had that you can think back and say, yeah, that w was really a growing step for me or something that really attracted me? I took from A.J. Schneider. Okay. And loved his work. Mm -hmm. And uh, And he was local? Uh, he lives in uh, Champions Forest area. That's, that's here. I don't uh, in Houston. In Houston, okay. okay. Uh, and he, uh, I, I love the way he portrayed his art. Uh, my husband and I went to his home, and my husband fell in love with his art. And so that, that helped, you know. Mm -hmm. And we bought... Uh, and he was a watercolorist. He was a watercolorist. And we bought... I guess three of his paintings, and they hung in my home in River Plantation for 
quite some years. years. Yeah. And uh, I, that made me love mm -hmm. that medium. Mm -hmm. uh, I've dabbled in them all, but that's my favorite. And when you're painting watercolor, do you have a subject that you typically go to, or do you try them all? Landscape, still life, figurative, abstract, maybe? I've done all those with figurative. <laughs> all those with figurative. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, Norma at the Conroe Art League, in fact, uh, going on right now is, the, is a life drawing class. I so, know that. So I, you mm, can, you uh, can yes. get up and, uh, get up and uh, life draw with us. Uh, uh, when that'd probably that. be my failing class. <laughs> <laughs> there's, no, there's no failing in it. Um, and I'd like to talk a little bit about art in a different way. And that's with your involvement in the Conroe Art League, uh, about in '72. So you're you've been uh, quite a few years. Uh, don't now. go there. <laughs> no, well, we're there already. Uh, so, would you tell us what are some of the things you've done as a volunteer? Because volunteers are the lifeblood of the Art League, and we need them. You've done quite a few things. I'm thinking. Can you tell us some of the things that you've done at the Art League? Oh, uh, of course, we were on the, quote, we called the hanging team. Right. And uh, for quite some time and loved doing it. Uh, you and, and for those that don't know, when we do a take-in at the art gallery, uh, we do it typically toward the first of the month. So the artists come in, they bring their work, they've registered, they signed up for a docent shift, and they're going to drop their art, place their art there and leave it and leave <laughs> if, if things work right. Yes. And then some members of the team and um, uh, do some things. And I know you and Shirley Blevins would look at the art and begin to place it because there's an, an art in that art of placing art, right? Right. And what are some of the guidelines that maybe you think about when you've got the art in? You're looking at size perhaps, um, what are some of the things that, oh, that you're trying to when arrange? When we uh, open the, the gallery? Oh, right? Well, whenever. If you were doing the take-in okay. and people are bringing their art, so now you and Shirley and the rest of the team are going to put the art, but you were kind of the first step. Yes, to place we were the, the first yeah. step. And Greg Campanella. I know that name. Oh, I don't know him, but I know the name. Was instrumental sculpture in starting name. us with a hanging team. Mm -hmm. And he taught us a way to hang, and which is, and what which is we that still way? do, and what is that? Tonight, that you start in the center of the wall, okay, and you pick your vocal point right there, mm -hmm. you, what you want in the center, and you take it and go out, mm -hmm. and that's what we always did, mm -hmm. and we would pick we would pick four mm -hmm. paintings mm -hmm. for those walls, mm -hmm. and then we would take it and where we could make it go. Just Spread it out. And the there's a word for it, but I can't remember. I what can't help you there either. But, uh, but that's how we always hung. And then Craig got so busy with his uh, statues and all mm -hmm. that that is so uh, memorable mm -hmm. and very sought after. Yes, and I think I think he still has a studio right on Main he Street. Does. He Just does. Uh, walk to the end of the block, just across the street. I wish I could uh, think of the name of the studio, and and we'd uh, give a promotion on that one. But uh, Greg Campanella. Greg Campanella. <laughs> that's the name of the studio. But so okay, so you had a process, and I know I've picked up over time. Well, don't put uh, if an artist brings in two or three pieces, don't put, don't them, put them all on. together. No. Separate them. You may separate by mm -hmm. subject matter. You may separate right. by medium and so on. But you want, in the end, a very nice, balanced, attractive look to draw people into yes. the gallery. Yes. And, uh, and that, You know, you, you used to hang several like that. Mm -hmm. And we wanted it simple mm -hmm. because... Sure. So they could... And that's the reason. Better. And yeah. I know there's a word for it, but I... Uh, it's, we'll have to go back and... We'll have to ask Craig. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to do that. And uh, other involvement in the Art League. Um, did you ever serve on the board? No. 
Never have. Never have. That surprises me. I did not know that. Probably would, didn't want me. <laughs> <laughs> I would have thought, yeah, you would have been a valuable member of the board at some point when they were growing, particularly when they moved in uh, to the building, which I think was, was it 2011, maybe? Uh, I think uh, so. Yeah. Uh, so and how blessed we are. Say, yes, yes, beautiful gallery. Well, it's not too late to get you on the board, so we'll soon be having a nominating committee come out. I'll have to mention your name. Uh, <laughs> so, so, uh, so, but uh, on the team and a lot of shows you've been involved with, of course, the, I don't know if it's the main one, but it is an important one, the Lone Star Art Guild. We yes. have our own, uh, sometimes the fall and the spring judge show to qualify for the Lone Star Art Guild. And we have that show. Uh, we, of course, we didn't have it this past year physically I because know. of COVID. Did it online for the first time, but other times we would have it uh, uh, at, at recently at a church. And uh, you're very active there. Very active. It's uh, quite a process. All the panels are up. And, it uh, is a big process. It is it? a big process. And uh, uh, so we hope to have those come back. At some I point. certainly hope so. Um, so um, maybe we could begin to look at uh, some of your art. We have uh, three pieces that mm -hmm. we're going to see. And if we can take a look at the first one, I'll ask you to tell us uh, the title. I'm going to guess it's watercolor, but tell us the title or maybe it's mixed media. Uh, some about the uh, <clears throat> inspiration of it. Uh, if it was a photo, was it your own photo? Or was it a reference photo taken from someone else? But what can you tell us about the piece? Well, it's on? a reference photo, uh, and the two, uh, the barn in the back is in another area, and the wagon was in another area, and it's my favorite, favorite place to go to. Is that right? Where Angel that? Fire, New Mexico. That's an angel for, in the winter. I mean. In the winter. And uh, the friends had this old wagon out in their mm -hmm. yard. And I fell in love with it. Yes. Uh, and then, you know, uh, I uh, drew it off and uh, mm -hmm. took a picture. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then that barn is... Uh, kind of up in near the ski slope in Angel Fire, mm -hmm. but off to the side. And it always intrigued me. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandfather had a, a farm out of Tuscola, uh, Texas, and raised cattle. And uh, that barn, I mean, mm -hmm. it just drew me to it. Mm -hmm. And so I merged the two and put it in a snow scene. And as I said, the pictures that were hanging on our wall were kind of in that, mm -hmm. uh, those colors and so forth. And I thought, well, I can do that. I'll try it. There so. you go. That's the spirit. I, I'm going to, you know, looking at that painting, uh, the impression I had as I was looking at it, and it's not a figurative drawing, and I won't be able to tell you the name of the piece, uh, but I think it was by Andrew Wyeth where uh, there's a, a young woman in the field and the house is in the distance. Do you know the one I'm talking about? No. Uh, but it, it reminded me of that, even though it, yours is not figurative, it's almost the same idea. Here's the wagon in the foreground. And, and the it barn takes you back in there. Yeah. Way back to the horizon, to the barn. So that was, uh, that was interesting. So thank you for that one, very mm -hmm. nice piece. And the second piece, um, again, uh, maybe a winter scene. Um, let's You're going to find out that my love is Angel Fire, New Mexico. That is also Angel Fire. Okay. As we were walking in the snow, I have friends, mm -hmm. dear, dear friends that live, still, live here and so forth. They had a home in Angel Fire. Mm -hmm. Just sold it this last year. Mm -hmm. And we walked, and as you look down the hill, mm -hmm was this house mm -hmm. with the snow and that tree. And it always, I thought, was lovely. Mm -hmm. And so I, that's the reason I tried to paint it. And that, uh, do you know the type of tree it is? Uh, no, I do not. Uh, it could be, an, it was not an aspen. It couldn't be an aspen. I was going to guess. But, but it you, may you be said, an aspen. Right. Um, because it, it's all very, uh, and it's near Taos. 
Uh, yes. And I've been there, and you come down, I mm -hmm. think they call it an alpine forest there, mm -hmm. uh, but it's very, very different when you're at that altitude and coming back down yes. towards Santa Fe and you have that. Um, and what struck me about that work, Norma, is it looked uh, abstract. Um, and I just know you said the house because that was the that was, house. That was that, the house. That I, was, I thought it was a stump, and <laughs> but maybe it's the size. It had a lot of snow on it. <laughs> it had a lot of snow. Um, so, oh, that that was dramatic, though. Okay. Well, let's take a look at the uh, let's take a look at the third piece. Well, this is this is different. Okay. So, okay. tell us about what's the title this of is, this one. This is Poppy. Okay. Oh, and I'm. Whether it's dancing in the wind or something on that mm -hmm. order, I'm not. I, mm -hmm. uh, now is this all watercolor? This is watercolor N nothing and zentangling, and, and so. Uh, and zentangling, okay, and that would be the geometric uh, formations you have in the yes, back. Yes, and I did. A, it was the background was more or less a pouring. And the poppy was too, but I had to control that red mm -hmm. in there. Uh, and uh, there again, poppies grow in Angel Fire, New <laughs> Mexico. Fire. And I, I just, I, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, and I like the way um, uh, to the right, as we're looking at it, mm -hmm. it, it kind of fades. Fades maybe, in, uh, yes. that, uh, there's a word for that that's going to escape a into a lost a, a lost contour, mm -hmm. okay. I think, because uh, it's fairly distinct with the other part. Then you have that lost contour yes. to that piece to the side, and that's a poppy. And I would have guessed, but you said maybe some zentangling. I thought I would have guessed those geometric figures were something you embossed with some kind of a, a pattern or something, but you didn't. Mm -hmm. that was that, was I that took the leaves and I did, you know, the uh -huh. petals uh -huh. and, and did those in the one of the zentangle patterns, and then came up and I was. How big is that piece? Uh, it is probably a sixteen by twenty. Uh -huh. It's 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 large, it's really large. hanging on my wall yes. now. <laughs> I bet, I bet. Which I, we talked, we joked about your uh, your house because I've been there once. We. Uh, Brought a piece of furniture uh -huh. to to you, that which yes. you had generously donated to the gallery to use. Yes. And then we moved on to an, another way to display the jewelry. So you said, "Well, I want yeah. my piece back." Uh, but um, you do store a lot of your art at home. If you, if <laughs> I mean, you probably give a heck of a lot away as well. Um, but is that 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 room dedicated to to all the art in there? There's two bedrooms that have it's two bedrooms. total art supplies and pictures. Oh my gosh! And yeah. it's just I had to scale down, and <laughs> and I didn't want to get rid of my art. Well, certainly. Other, than, you know, yeah. I mean, not that I wouldn't mm -hmm. sell it, but I, it, that's where it is. Let's talk. Go back maybe to the Lone Star Art Guild shows. Um, and uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, the art leagues that are part of the Lone Star Art Guild, uh, the art leagues will have their own show at the gallery, and then that qualifies you if you win uh, a best of show, best landscape, or best floral, first, second, third, and first honorable mention qualifies the artist to exhibit in the Lone Star Art Guild, or as we say, LSAG show, convention show, which is once a year. And that just finished. Did you happen to, uh, to? I have one. You have I one. I was uh, shocked. <laughs> yeah, what'd you get this year? Uh, I got a first place. Uh, okay. A first first place. place in what division? Uh, I, it was uh, watercolor. Mm hmm And uh, you're a professional. Uh, no, I'm a semi-professional. You're a semi-professional, and again, the the Lone Star Art Guild ask artists to actually they qualify themselves as to if they're professional, semi-professional, uh, non-professional, uh, or adult student. Mm -hmm. And then the student, there are three different levels, elementary, middle school, and high school. Mm -hmm. So your watercolor won first place in... Well, I have to correct that. It won watercolor, it was alcohol ink. <sighs> Sorry about that. No, that's, that's <laughs> even better. Because it kind of looked... You know, I didn't know it looked you did like that. water. Yeah, color. I didn't know you did that. Yeah. Now, that's a new medium for you? Very. 
there. And, and how did you learn to do Alcohol Link? Right. Because uh, if you haven't seen Alcohol Link, it's brilliant colors and it looks like it's just going every place, but that's the art to bring it back and, mm -hmm. and make it look like something, but brilliant colors with Alcohol Link, in my opinion. So how did you learn to do it? Well, we, uh, our group that met at Christ Church, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I don't remember exactly who taught us out there. One of the people that come out there, and mm -hmm. we tried it. I don't think it was Golda, but I'm not positive. Was it perhaps Brenda McDougall? No. Was it Brenda? No. Because Brenda is, a, of course, an Art League member, and she's a board member, and she does alcohol. Right, and, right. And uh, quite accomplished with it, but it wasn't no, Brenda. No, because this, is, this is back. Back. Back okay. several years. And uh, we have pretty well, if somebody knows a medium, mm -hmm. you know, they would show and, mm -hmm. and that uh, type of thing. And I apologize because I cannot tell you, sure. but I fell in love with it and then kind of went off on my own. Easy, what I wanted easy to, to see. Um, and we have a, an honor um, at the Art League every three months. Uh, there's a vote on what we call the banner piece, and you know that. And uh, the, it, the people vote on it. It's not judges coming in. It's the artists and guests that come into the gallery. They vote on it. And that piece that's voted the Banner Award, it hangs in the courtyard. So you get a very nice position there. And you've won that piece. Mine that, was the first one. Yours was the first one to, to I win. felt very blessed. Oh, I bet you were. Do you remember what that piece, what it was a it watercolor? It was the snow scene. It was that snow of scene that, that house showed? entry, yes. Oh, so that was some good validation back then. Yes. That, and it's hanging a, at the Salvation Army. Oh, very nice. And uh, that's one thing we do at the Art League is that the banner hangs uh, in the courtyard for three months, and then we find a nonprofit agency. Uh, it used to be in the city of Conroe, but now we've expanded, kind of saturated wow. in the city of well. Conroe to Montgomery County uh, and offer the piece. So that's quite an honor. I know the symphony has quite a mm -hmm. few uh, at their building on, on Frazier. Uh, so you had the, uh, the banner, quite, a, quite an honor. And then you still have the original piece. Yes, it's and, uh, hanging in my dining room. <laughs> uh, very good, very good. And of course, you uh, you enter quite often the monthly shows that we have at the gallery. And um, I know you like to learn, as we talked about the alcohol link. And I'm trying to remember that last demo artist when we were still prior to the pandemic. We had a demo artist come in, uh, and she was doing something different as well and I remember you and Shirley and a lot of other people were there uh, because you had taken one of her classes do you remember the one I'm talking of uh, is unusual putting together almost like a collage piece um, and you oh had, yes uh, you had, yes yes you had an animal that you made do you remember was it a rooster yes it was a rooster yes the, yeah. oh that rooster yes yes you still have that yes i do you still do that kind of work no yeah but it was fun but it was fun yeah. but it was oh she uh we did those out of church mm -hmm. and uh, at christ church and uh i enjoyed doing that that was mm -hmm. that was a lot of fun she I is remember, a fun lady. Yeah, I remember at the demo, a lot of you artists, you and Shirley and some others, brought the piece that you all had done, yes. and it was it was fascinating to watch her do it, and then at the same time uh, see the finished pieces that you all had done. Uh, so so very good. Um, have you ever taught art? No. Have you ever done commissions? Mm -hmm. Uh no. Okay. Okay. Well, Norma, I thank you for that walk through your uh, your life in art and uh, hearing about your, you know, coming from Abilene. I, I didn't know where you're from, so uh, I've been through there. So nice to hear about that. Uh, so to see Norma's art as well as the art of other talented artists at the Conroe Art League, please visit us at the Best Little Art Gallery in historic downtown Conroe. We're located at 127 Simonton Street and we're open 
uh, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday. And we call ourselves Cal. Uh, so come visit us to create, appreciate, and learn.